Welcome, welcome everybody to the Give It Podcast, the podcast for nerds, for blurs. If you have a fandom, you are most certainly welcome here. We are your hosts of the most, uh, Black Spartan, show guy Joe. Tafari TV will be joining us very shortly. But uh, Joe, we made the Friday, sir. How you feeling? Why did you bring jetpacks? <laughs> Oh, well, jetpacks will be kind of nice, especially. With, especially. No, I'm okay. Uh, it's been a day for me. I got to go see uh, Transformers on. We will talk about that later tonight. Mm-hmm. I got back from a Star Trek convention. Much fun was had. I got to go get pictures. Go get friends for pictures tomorrow. This work week has been an unmitigated nightmare. I've been playing uh, and doing very poorly in Space Marine 2. I really uh, I, don't like I, what they did with the... Ex- I don't like what they did with the execution system in the game, in the second game. Uh, you you kind of get used to it, but I can see your point. Um, but well, I mean, we, the before... first game it rejuvenated your health. In this game, it just mm-hmm. gives you like a pip of armor back. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not also gonna playing say it on hard, the hard, I'm also playing on hard difficulty. So there's that. God bless you. Um, but as you can see, guys, we are a little bit older, which means that we do use the games intended. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna judge. Um, but again, guys, we are older, which means that we do watch our language sometimes. But let's be honest, words do fly. Uh, at the same time, guys, we do play a lot of trailers and um, mangas on here that may not be susceptible for younger viewers, so viewer discretion is advised. Aside from that, welcome. So speaking of weird, um, because I'm going to hold off on the trailer I was going to start with until our other colleague is here. But this one is weird. Um, Robert Pattinson, um, in the middle of waiting to do the next Batman movie, decides to do a movie called Mickey 17. Um, I don't know how else I could describe Mickey 17 outside of watching it. However, I will say that there is some um, questions. I can describe it very easily. Go for it. Monty Python's Gattaca. I can see that, but for all those that have not seen the Mickey Seventeen, for all those that have not seen the Mickey Seventeen trailer, here it is. Hi, Mickey. Are you experiencing any vertigo? I guess I am feeling a little dizzy. Oh wow! Did you see that? Nah, I wouldn't be surprised if you were thinking at this point, what have I done? How lucky can one guy be? Nothing was working out, and I wanted to get off of Earth. You're applying to be an expendable? Yeah. You read through the whole application. Ain't that a kick in the head? Yeah, I should have read through it. Once you die, we'll print a new version of your body. My head keeps spinning. They made me work my ass off on one mission after another. Every time you die, we learn something new, and humanity moves forward. Oh, it is life. It's fine. My life is gonna be beautiful. Vicky, it's not looking very good for you. Yeah, no. I'm sure you're used to it by now, but what's it feel like to die? Even on my 17th go around, I hate dying. Why aren't you dead? Multiples. In the case of multiples, it's just like we exterminate every individual. Tell me quick. Let's blow up these secondhand baloney boys. Why don't you guys do rock, paper, scissors, and then we'll just shoot the loser. Tell me quick. Boy, love a kick. Tell me quick. I don't like you, but I'm you. I'm not you. I'm gonna kill you. Tell me quick. Well, um, there is no other way to describe that movie outside of what uh, Joe went with. That was the trailer for Mickey 17. The one thing I will say from this, guys, outside of it being in theaters, as you can see there, uh, 
the end of the next year, January 31st, 2025. It's weird that we're saying that considering that we're three months away from the beginning of the new year. But um, I did not realize that Robert Pattinson could pull off an accident like that. But uh, a multiple movie about clones. I mean, it's it's different. Um, is it worth seeing? I kind of think so because the premise is just all over the place. But Joe, what do you think? I think if you've ever wished Robert Pattinson would die because of his uh, or not Barbara Benson, but Edward would die. Uh, this is your dream come true because you get to see him go multiple ways. And yeah. some people will say that out of the Twilight Hatred, it still exists. Twilight Hatred still exists. A lot of well, us forgave him after Batman. I mean, I, I I already gave my apology tour for Batman. I did my apology tour after after the Batman. So, um, but it's it's but after, I mean, honestly, I, this is just kind of. Good. This is this is like if this didn't say Mel Brooks, if this or excuse me, if this did say a Mel Brooks production, I would one hundred percent believe it. This has that kind of sense of humor in it. Uh like I said a little bit of Monty Python esque. Uh, definitely looks humorous. I definitely want to go see it just because like sci fi movies just are few and far between, and this looks like a very fun sci-fi movie. Yeah, I can't argue that. But um, but switching gears for a second, because again, as a Batman fan, this brings me joy. Um, but then again, as comic book as comic book fans, we all should be overjoyed at this next bit of news. Uh, Batman, um, the first superhero, will get his Hollywood Walk of Fame star. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is not related to any of the actors that portrayed Batman. This is actually the character himself. Um, he will actually be getting the star actually six days from now on September 26th. Um, we're not sure if any of the still alive actors who have played Batman will give a speech. Um, but it's just interesting now that we really think about it. Because a lot of people didn't know this. I didn't know this. That, you know, for all of our superhero icons, only Batman has a walk of fame. Has a Hollywood star walk of fame, I should say. But... I think it's pretty cool, but you know, there's always going to be some people that's going to sit there and say, Well, why does always got to be Batman? Well, I mean, you could argue all you want to, but I didn't know there was a certain um, sort of process to get a walk of fame. But I'm not complaining because, again, it just goes to show you that we're finally recognizing comic book heroes in the same way we recognize celebrities. But, um, Joe, anything else you want to add to that? More than likely, those Hollywood Walk of Fame was brought by Wayne Enterprises for publicity stunt reasons. But again, it will be interesting to see who actually does. I mean, would it be Christian Bale? Would it be Robert Pattinson? I wouldn't um, be surprised if it was any of the living ones. George Clooney? I mean, it could be. It could be. No, you know, I don't think they would allow Clooney. You don't think Clooney would get it after Batman and Robin? No, he's had to go on <laughs> such an apology tour. Most definitely, I could see Keaton being the one to give his handprint. That, uh, yeah. If not him, well, Bill Finger's granddaughter or daughter is still alive i believe maybe her i don't know it's kind of weird of who the hand would be because like i was gonna say didn't, no, go ahead. I, was, five. I was gonna say didn't bob Wait. kane has a doesn't bob kane have family still alive yeah more people would prefer bill finger than bob kane but i mm. believe so I mean, you know, I mean, if it was up to me and they were doing this, it would be Kevin Conroy putting his handprints. Oh, uh, that would be nice. I'm not gonna lie, that would that would really, really be that nice. That would do it. Yeah, that would be nice to actually see that. But you know, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. But still, it would be freaking nice. Um, also, some other quick news. Uh, if you didn't like Jedi Star Wars Survivor, uh, we are actually are going to be getting a third game. Um, Electronic, I'm sorry, that's the wrong screen. My bad. Electronic Arts has let us know that the next Star Wars game uh, will be the final chapter in the Cal Kestis story. Um, I, for one, like Jedi Survivor. Uh, Joe, did you ever play Jedi Survivor? Oh, yeah, I've played both of them. They're fantastically okay. fun games. So... Um, Respawn um, is the one it's actually Respawn Entertainment was behind uh, Fallen Order and Survivor. They will actually be doing the third game. Um, again, I'm not knocking it. EA could use some wins right now, especially in the sense of uh, the fact that we're not getting a Mandalorian game, but still I want, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll say this before we move on to the next trailer. 
Uh, Star Wars, uh, excuse me, uh, Jedi Survivor really did feel like a mid story. I'm not going to spoil it because, again, people have not played it. Um, although I wouldn't recommend going on YouTube, there's full playthroughs of it if you're trying to avoid it. But, um, and Joe, you can, you know, add on to this as well. Uh, it did feel like a mid story game, it did kind of give the Empire Strikes Back kind of feel like you got a mid story, it didn't really end. There's still something on. There's still something going on. Not saying Star Wars, uh, not saying that Jedi Survivor wasn't a great game. It was. I just didn't think it was a finish. I didn't think that was the finished chapter, which we will now get, uh, hopefully, I guess in a couple of years, I would say they didn't really give a time frame on when we're expecting this final game. But hopefully we'll be able to actually get a ending to Cal Kester's story. Oh, but yeah. Least, no, most, no, most definitely. I do wonder... If now that uh, second story ends there, so I wonder if now the third they found a home. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm we'll we'll do some mild spoilers on this one. We Cal has a home. Cal has a now a fully found family, and has gotten together with his night sister, goth girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the third game is he has a family now. He must protect his family. True. I can, I can, I mean, that's kind of how it went, especially with the fact that surprise at the end, which I did not see coming about that person. No, didn't see that one coming either. But I mean, yeah, it's all about, you know, and then the whole thing about his, uh, that other person. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to go to spoil territory now, but there's a, there's something, there's a wrinkle that happens at the end of the game that I think will affect the next, that will affect the next game. But that's all I'm going to say about that. But again, EA, you're actually making great decisions. Let's hope you keep that up. But um, I guess we could talk about this next thing because, you know, we, we, me and Joe and Tafari have all said this was going to happen. It just took a while. Um, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company are officially suing Power World over multiple patent infringements. And I know, the, I know all of us can say what a collective duh. I mean, let's be honest. They didn't say what they were, but there are similarities. It is Pokemon with guns. And now, it, and now we thought for the longest time, how was Power World getting away with this when they were not getting creative licensing from the Pokemon company? To which now, which is still weird that they're waiting till now to sue. That's well, the thing that doesn't well, make any sense. Well, pointing something out is pointing something out is we all thought they were going to be suing for copyright infringement. Right. This is patent infringement, which is a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. Even Power World itself says, like, we're not aware of what patents they're going after that said we're copying. And, you know, right. we, we all looked at some of these Power World creatures. Some of it is very close to copyright infringement, mm -hmm. but not patent infringement. Because patent-wise, outside of the capturing of creatures, this Power World is a fundamentally different game. It is not. Go around and beat uh, beat children and beat gym leaders to become the best runner was. It's a build survival mm -hmm. simulator, just with you're capturing your workforce, right? Also including humans, which involves some scrupulous thing, which is even brought up in the game that it's like you can capture humans. It's not looked well upon, but you can do it. Um, yeah. It's also very bizarre that this came out in what January? Now it's September they're launching this. Mm -hmm. Like that's why I said I'm, it's weird. I'm wondering if there's not something in an upcoming Pokemon game that conflicts with Power World to where they have to take out Power World to move forward. You know, it's the but that's the thing about it. It's like, why did they wait until, like you said, this came out the beginning of 2024? They're now, and we thought, and we said a long time ago when we first saw Power World, somebody's getting sued. We called Yeah, it but we thought it'd because, be for copyright. Right. We I'm thought happy. it'd be for copyright. Yeah, yeah. We thought it'd be for copyright. But like you said, why eight months later that now you want to sue? Because that that's to me that's questionable. To me, that's like like you said, is there something coming up? Is there something you know they're trying to stop? It just makes you wonder why the why the wait now? Why the eight month wait? That that's the thing I'm getting I at. I can't help but wonder if it's to 
that Pokemon Arceus sequel, the one that's taking place in mm-hmm. France, the not Ruby and Sapphire, mm-hmm. not Diamond Pearl. Scarlet and Violet. The one right before the Sun No, no, no. Uh, the Sword one before Shield? Sun and Moon. Sword and Shield? Black and White? Uh, you got me thinking about it now. But, but why is it going up? So far, we, we, did show the trailer, we did show the trailer for Mickey 17. Um, have you seen that trailer yet? I never saw the original, not the original. Is that this generation's multiplicity asking as someone who's never seen it? Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Yes. Then, yeah, from what I've been told. And all I put it as Monty Python's Gattaca. Okay. Well, yeah, I like the concept of death is basically a job. Yeah. A job that's not. <laughs> it really sucks. In this economy, let's stop giving these corporations ideas. Pretty much. Between but um, this, Between this and the Belco experiment, I think they're going to try one of them. That's true. But, yeah, that's what we caught so far. And then talking about Power World finally getting sued by Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. That, as many black YouTubers have told me growing up, if they let it, you get away with it for too long, they're building a case on you, Diddy. Pretty much. <laughs> they're building a case. X and Y. Oh. It's Pokemon. I wonder if it's X and Y. That's what it was. Okay. So I wonder yeah, if it, there's anything that parking Pokemon Arceus A to Z that we're mm, gonna have to start building things. And they need um, power off the table. Because supposedly rumors have it that this A is right after the giant war that they talked about, and they're mm-hmm. rebuilding the region. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. if it's literal rebuilding the region. So they gotta get power road out of the way for a building. Uh, Pokemon with some building aspects to it. It would make sense. It would honestly be their next step because even the way they do Arceus, the way that you are able to craft certain things, get a hold of certain materials and whatnot, is based mm-hmm. on like which Pokemon you leave in the daycare, which Pokemon you leave in the farms. Is that like a alpha Pokemon or a regular? I like the concept of Arceus. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to a non-mainstay title Pokemon game, they very much drop it, and then they are on to the next thing. Because, like, yeah. Pokemon Ranger was cool. That got, like, enough commercials, and then it came out. Didn't talk about it again. Um, um, when the DS came out, and they were segmenting, they put one on Game Boy, one on the DS. Um, mm-hmm. What was it? Mystery Dungeon Red and Mystery Dungeon Blue or something like that? Yeah. yeah they had quite a bit of sequels for Mystery Dungeon. I'm saying, but when they drop, they drop a mystery dungeon, and then it's like, okay, that's done. Next, until the, then, it's the main Pokemon game. Here's another mystery mm-hmm. dungeon. Done with that. Pokemon Coliseum, GameCube. Done with that until we make a sequel. And it's just, mm-hmm. I wish they put more. Like Arceus had some decent DLC content. Most of it was just like free giveaway stuff. But it is a very, if you 100 percent it, it's a very lengthy game. I had a lot of fun with it, but once it's done, it is. It's done. Yeah. I still can't but, beat the food true final boss. Okay. That's a, that's gonna be a whole other discussion. No, Pokemon but, part is crap. I'm really? gonna take your I gotta take your word for it. I never got that far. So for I, I, for me, I beat the game, mm-hmm. but there are these challenges at the end where you have to like beat a gauntlet with a certain Pokemon. And that requires you getting like a level 99 Wurmple and a Magic Card because that those were the most annoying of the DLC challenges. Um, I think there is one where you get a Dark Ride if you have, I think um, it's not Sword and Shield. I think a whatever ones they dropped recently. Um, it's either a Scarlet and Violet or an Alpha Diamond and Pearl save file. Um, but I know there were rumor like people were starting rumors of a Pokemon Art not Arceus but a Pokemon Celebi. Uh huh. It would be. I don't know the lore. I don't know the lore of recent Pokemon games, but I didn't realize that like ninety percent of the the cast you talk to in that game are all like pre um ancestors of people in like current games. Yeah, that would be interesting though. And then with I like what Joe mentioned because if they're gonna do a building thing, there were Mm -hmm. a lot of people who also pointed out like, hey, this. 
area actually becomes like Saffron City or this becomes this part of this region or this. Um, I think the flower field in Arceus actually is like becomes a garden, a famous garden later on. So a lot of lore went over my it head. It becomes the we're... area where the. I think it becomes the area because it's the the region where the temple is risen. Mm -hmm. uh, temple yeah, is risen so, up, uh, then burns down to make the dogs. Yes. So I, I, I just I went on like a deep dive because I was reading about the game as I was playing it. And I didn't realize how much was being added in. So if the next game was to show either that same region or a similar play style with you building what becomes the original Kanto, that'd be great. Hmm. Power will beat them to the punch, and now everyone's angry. Pretty much. Well, I was waiting on you for I was waiting on you to Far Eye because um, the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero full character Rolasa reveal did come out, and y'all got y'all have to help me out on this. But I'm not sure who was right or who was wrong about the final spots. But here's the trailer. Yeah, they heard the leaks and they said, "All right." Here I come! I will destroy now, you! Upstairs. I will defeat I'm you! I'm not going to lose! Not giving up! But if I win, you have to leave this planet untouched! Deal? Alright! My goodness, you must be some kind of idiot to face me! Here I am! No! I'm not done yet! What do you say we continue this fight on equal footing? God to God! No, the unstoppable night of the transport! The whole universe is watching with bated breath to see the shocking climax in my theater. The worst go on. Soon the world I've been dreaming of for so long will be made manifest. Forging a new world isn't for you to do, it's up to us humans! <laughs> I'll blow everything away! Seriously? I'll take you out! This is the end for you! On the side of the Saiyans! Well then, let's carry on, shall we? I must be victorious! Triangle Danger Beam! I'm not going to lose! Huh? Son of a- <laughs> Better not embarrass Master! <laughs> What? You'll have to excuse me. What is what they trust in me? Kick it down! Everything I've got! All into this one attack! Whoa! Looks like there's lots of powerful opponents still out there! Kakarot! You wanna die? Yeah. Try me! Don't know when to die, huh? It's over now! Kamehameha! We're here to die! I'm not done yet! I won't be defeated as easily as my brother. It is I who decides who lives and who dies! I won't show you any mercy. Not until I rip out your throat. Well, does my resurrection surprise you? You'll never conquer me. Never! Suppose I could run you over before I kill Goku. Commencing the final test. There's nothing you can do. You're just a gnat buzzing around me like a pest. Dead zone. It will absorb everything. Those who mocked and belittled my genius shall suffer the consequences tenfold. I feel like my old, young self again. I fear nothing now. Face me if you dare. That cost us out of war one. Have you come for the fruit of the Tree of Might? With the gift of my new power, I now have no equal. I'm curious if dominate the voice of the universe. You'll be feeling this one. 
Electric Buster! Get back! Drops! Hey, I'll take over! You will not spread your evil to this planet! Disappear! I am neither Goku nor Vegeta! I am the one who will destroy you! I knew they were shaped. I knew they shaped the roster like this for a reason because every uh -huh. DLC is just going to get added as an additional slot. But I like how they just saw the leaks and were just like, "Fine, we'll just release everything." So, I mean, a uh, hundred and eighty characters. So here's the actual fun thing: there's a hundred and eighty-two, mm -hmm. and this is an actual Dragon Ball reference. Yep. During the 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai, where it's uh, the finale is uh, Goku versus Tien round one. Mm -hmm. That is the exact number of entrants to that tournament. 182 no. fighters. I'm just... Uh, I, was, I, I was trying to remember from last, from a uh, week before episode, who called who called, Bra who called Brawley? I forgot. Was it you or was it was it you or Tafara? I think it was both of us. Yeah, I said they were gonna. Uh, they were probably saving movie characters for last, if not mm -hmm. original Dragon Ball. Which mm -hmm. I'm curious if we're starting at Z or if we're gonna go back to that part too. Um, and then they dropped like the most nostalgic tsunami ass. If you go to the um, the Bandai minimizing, go to the actual like Bandai uh, YouTube page. They dropped uh -huh. like. They just dropped like a 40 second nostalgic ass, um, like Toonami bump. Yeah, that first one. It's like the only one. You've been waiting for this moment. Tremble before my power! Challenge accepted. <laughs> I'll put you out of your mission. Don't you dare! No more holding back! Like this! Yeah. Dealing with the proud prince of all Saiyans, I will defeat you this day. The time is now. Followed by yeah, Outlaw Star. That that they should sure ran with that. That was. Now I want to watch Tsunami. But no, right, sure I, think, I think that. they held off until they showed everybody. Also, thank y'all for fixing Super Boo's voice because that was confusing for a little while. I like that. I mean, I mean that cut did give tsunami vibes, but I dug that. Uh, so the, they, they know exactly. That, we also so confirmed that the DLC is now officially uh, superheroes and Dima. Okay. I feel like base roster is one eighty one or one eighty two. I feel like I feel like there's still characters we may unlock during the game or through what if scenarios or different mm -hmm. transformations. Either way, that is that is stacked for an early release. Or for a oh, yeah. game. I, I mean, I'm I mean October 11th can't get here fast enough. But since you guys are here, um, you both have seen Transformers One. Um, I'm gonna let you guys run with it. Uh, between you and Joe, what did you guys think of it? Um, uh, I know that you guys. Sorry, I asked. I asked him at the top of show. Ask you, why did you bring jetpacks? I was surprised those had a limited amount of fuel. I'm like, you could have just kept going throughout the entire. Mm -hmm. I also, I felt like I because I just I watch a lot of movies. I sniffed out the bad guy early on. Mm -hmm. Oh no, the bad guy was obvious. Was it okay? I was making sure it wasn't just me reading too into it because I was like, this is a. Well, one, I, I kind of want a redo for War of Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron because those games are great. They were just. I think they were put at the end of the 360 lifestyle, so not a lot of people picked up on them. But seeing the 
they do a good job when they say this can be an origin story for whichever franchise is your favorite because it too. is very, I like the it's very universal like hey this can lead to whichever timeline you like this is a trend this is not a um mm-hmm. what a uh this is so early it doesn't matter they all can lead to any of the any of the well they can't lead to one there's only one series it can't lead to what is that beast wars or a different um, no, animated Really? Yeah, because Optimus, the war is already over after that point. Well, this, and Optimus uh, Prime is a just on a tugboat uh, doing space gate ma- uh, space gate maintenance. They wouldn't. This wouldn't predate the original animated series, or this doesn't. No, even- because no, no, not the original G one Transformers animated. Is that the two thousand three series? Yes. That's the, the one I, where they so look the like. Grew up uh, the one where they look like uh, anime characters? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Megatron had never met Opt- those two had never met each other at that point. Okay. But no, easily the best joke in this movie to me, without spoiling too much, A.A. Tron. That was hilarious. Yeah. Because there were certain things, like, it, it, depending on how much of a fan you are of either the actors or Transformers, um... There's definitely stuff that I caught or I heard other people catching. And I was like, okay. And even some of the kids were like, okay. Even the the kids laughed at A.A. Tron. <laughs> but, um, and then, because I know they had the one comic you brought up a few weeks ago where it's like they couldn't license so it just says, you know the song in the background. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. No, I, I, love, I love that opening line. They, they did something similar with that. And I thought that was funny because I'm like, I actually caught that. Even though I never watched the original... <laughs> Transformers movie. Um, yeah, I actually got to go to an early screening thanks to uh, Mr. King and Queen Lion. So much appreciated for that and Allied Global Marketing. So that was actually pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I would say if whether you are an OG Transformers fan or you want to like take your kids or just introduce somebody new, this can serve as a good starting point and then let them go watch whatever franchise they want. I know the new one, the next movie, I think they said the next movie is going to be the G.I. Joe crossover. Yeah. Um, also, if next you go live see action it, movies, yeah, the GI Joe crossover. Yeah, which I thought yeah. Rise. Of, I, I found a lot of people didn't like Rise of the Beast. I thought it was okay. No, Rise of the Beast was good. I, I mean, there are some people that you know may have some differences. I mean, me and Joe thought it was great. I mean, it was a, a lot but, better than Michael Bay's last few movies. But I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. Uh, this is also, from what I understand, this is supposed to be a trilogy. That's what I'm hearing too. I think we're going we're, to get the fall of Cybertron throughout this series. Yeah, because I think it's supposed to go from the start of the war. The second movie is the middle of the war, and the third movie is supposed to be the end of the war and them going to Earth. From what I understand, I don't know if that's official yet or not. That's one of those you hear it in the Transformer bo- rumor mills and message boards like this is the That's universe what I've been hearing that a lot too, but I'm hoping if they do make it a trilogy it still serves as a origin tale because what I don't want is for that to be taken away after this film mm-hmm. also because um if you go see it at certain theaters which is why I was late because Paramount is is both you actually get an exclusive uh Sonic 3 poster with oh, yeah. I was about to, I was uh, just about to go into that Tabara um that you uh, I'm glad you brought that up because because there is a contest associated with that. Um, if you do go to see Sonic, if you do, I'm sorry, if you do go to see the Transformers movie, they are giving away posters for Sonic uh, the Hedgehog 3. Here's the caveat to it, that also in some of these, you actually might be enough, lucky enough to get a signed, uh, signed movie poster by the person who voices Shadow, Mr. Keanu Reeves himself. Um, if you are one of the lucky ones, uh, but still, that contest is going on right now. Tafari, I know you're more than determined to get that signed. To get that signed. Uh, they, they, the stack was already low when I walked in there. I was just like, I've seen it already. Can I please just get one? They were just like, Sure, here, take two. But neither <laughs> one of them, neither one of them was autographed. But I think they got a call, or some of the theaters are being stingy about it. So, mm-hmm. which I understand. I didn't buy a ticket for the movie because I'm not paying for something I saw for free already. Um, yeah. But they were she, the lady knows me and she's nice and she's like here just take two and just go out that way. So neither one were autographed, but there wasn't a lot left for me to choose from in the first place. So 
Mm -hmm. I'm happy to have this. And then it goes right underneath the Sonic 2 poster I got two years ago. Nice. Yeah, but back to the movie, like, I really, really enjoyed everything. <laughs> Voice acting was great. Uh, lots of good lore. I was able to pick out a lot of things. Really surprised with a lot of the character choices they went with. Uh, yes. with what was it, Steve? That's Steve? Steve Buscemi is Starscream? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I, I knew the voice. I, I really want to know why they... Yeah. I really want to know why they kept using Darkwing and uh, Dreadwing so much. Like, uh, those two guys are like from what the Japanese series. So bravo for them for including them as like main characters for the first quarter of the movie. The two bullies. Uh, that bullies, really surprised right? me. It's like, huh, okay. So we got... Yeah, yeah they're uh, from Trans Super God Master Force. They're uh, Power Masters. They don't even like... They fuse in like one big super jet. Okay. Which like really confused me. It's like, oh, wow. Wow, they're using these two guys. Cool. I thought they'd be using like run amok and runabout. Then my friends had to ask me, like, where are all the combiner teams? It's like those guys weren't made until they hit uh until they got Earthside. The only actual combiner team is like the Constructicons. Which now I want to see because the way this animation style is, I really want to see Devastator. And then what did she call them? Because there was one that every, what did she call them? Gobots that every and that's the one that everybody lost it. And I was like, I feel like Oh I'm yeah, yeah. She used mm -hmm. Gobots as a dirty as like a racial slur to somebody. Yeah. The Gobots are like just the mini ones, right? No, no. Oh. Gobots no. were the no. USA Cartoon Express series that slightly mm -hmm. predates the Transformers, but Toy wise, were vastly inferior to Transformers. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was it. The the amount of like seeing a class system hierarchy system in the auto in the, not in the Autobots the Transformers world, and then the, the hearing Gobots used as a slur. I was like, okay, so this is a um, this is a little bit like real life, and I kind of see it. Also, I feel like Brian Tyree Henry has just locked his inner thug just. Behind some kind of like mental oh, God, block, yeah. because yeah. like he he does a lot of his roles great, but he's like he's still himself lately. Because mm -hmm. there's some times where it's like, all right, D sixteen Brian Tyree Henry, Megatron is Paperboy, but you can hear it like slipping out of him. But before mm -hmm. he goes too far into it, he just tucks it back every time. Like even yeah. when he's like going full Megatron, I'm like just I'm like let that inner let the hoodlum back out, and he just never does. <laughs> And I'm, I'm hoping they're saving it for another film. It's, it's almost that Simpsons reference of, and it's almost that Simpsons reference from uh, Lee, uh, Ralph loves Lisa, where it's like, and you can see pinpoint the exact moment in Heartbreaks right there, because <laughs> you that can see the exact moment. It's like, screw it, screw it, screw everything, burn it all down. Mm -hmm. Even when he adopts the name, like, you know what it is? I noticed Brian kind of talks with a lisp when he's using his regular voice, but when mm -hmm. he talks as Paperboy, he's very clear and, like, concise, and I was kind of waiting to hear it, but you can hear it, like, slipping out of him as he gets angrier throughout the movie, and he just never fully sends. And the only thing I'll knock is at the ending, the last fight slash conversation very much felt like, all right, we're running out of time, animation, and budget in these people's time. Wrap it up. Because I'm like, don't we have a whole thing going on up there still? Like, do we do we really need to be fighting at this time when there's still that to worry about? But if they're going to do a sequel, I'm, I guess that's where we're going. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward. I look forward to that hopefully uh, this weekend. I'm definitely getting to watch that. What are you going to say, Joe? Uh, it was just a nice two-hour movie of me being told Megatron was right the whole time. Very much. You will feel you will feel no, about like, Megatron. That joke aside. Mm -hmm. You're good. No, go ahead, Safari. I was gonna say you feel about Megatron in this movie the way everyone does about Magneto. Like the M's are right. That's it. Yeah. Good to keep in mind. 
Um, but if you guys actually seen Transformers One, let us know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, Joe, uh, anything else you want to add to that before we uh, move on to the weird Star Wars casting? I really, really liked the subtle nuance for Megatron going from D sixteen to Megatron, where he has like bright eyes, and then they slowly fall down the red spectrum as it. Mm -hmm. The movie goes along, like the more angry and more uh, unhinged he becomes, the, like, they slowly go from yellow to orange to the finale where they're like bright red. Hmm. That'd be interesting. So that's something to look forward to. That's, I just I just can't wait to actually see the movie. But thank you guys for that. Last, well, now, when I mentioned weird Star Wars casting, I mean, I'm not mad about this because... Jaleel, Jaleel White has had it rough, but knowing that he is going to be in Star Wars Skeleton Crew as a pirate named Gun uh, Gunther, not to be confused with the wrestler Gunther from WWE, but the actual character he's playing in Skeleton Crew. I'm not saying it's weird, but the first time I saw this picture, I swore it down was Jermaine Dupree. Like, look dead at him. I, I thought was like, it was someone completely different. But it just it just threw me off. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, he's he's due to have you know everybody's bound to play a role in, in playing in a Star Wars and playing a Star Wars show or movie is always a great thing. It's just weird that you know when you look at it, I was like, I did not see Jaleel White. Uh, Jaleel White, uh, also known as Steve Urkel, did not see him in this role at all. But now I'm curious. I mean, I wonder if it's going to be a one episode thing. I wonder if he's going to have a reoccurring role. It just gotta be interesting. That's all I can I can say about that. But yeah, the first picture, it's like he, he got a that that the first thing I said was Jermaine Dupree got a Star Wars role. I was like, oh no, that's Steve Urkel. I mean, nope, that's Jaleel White. But again, what do I mean? What are we thinking here? It's just that you know, it's just weird that we never thought we'd see him in a Star Wars role. It's just odd that this is the direction they have him as the as a, as a space pirate. I mean, they had O'Shea Jackson Jr. as... Uh, I looked at that picture, and if it wasn't for that, they told me it was the real mm -hmm. one. Go ahead, Jafar. I was going to say, I mean, they had Ice Cube's son in um, Obi-Wan, so I'm not against regular actors showing up in Star Wars. Yeah. We also had Lizzo and Jack Black married, so... That's fair. I was like, it just threw me off the seat to see Urkel as a space pirate, but... Again, I digress. Uh, so, but the other I, thing, I'm sorry. Go ahead, when I First saw this. Mm -hmm. So when I first saw this, if it wasn't pointed out to me that it was Julia White, I honest to God thought it was Sirach Lofton, or as people know him, Jake Cisco from D DS9. You know, I can see I that. that. Yeah, I can see that. Just remove the beard. And I literally just asked where I left it. So. Yeah, I mean, no, you're, I can see that too. Although, although I can only see the captain sitting there saying, of all the people you could play, you decide to look like the Dominion. But now, my next question is which button on his chest calls to pick up, have Laura pick him up? I have no idea. I'm letting that one go. That being said, um, Netflix, uh, One Piece, we do have another casting for that. Uh, Leah or Boba as Nico Robin, as you can see there, uh, will be joining the cast for season two. Um, for all those that don't know, um, Netflix is One Piece, if you haven't seen it, uh, it is great for eight, for its for eight episodes. It is moving forward with season two. Here's the casting that we have so far. Please forgive me if I mess up on any of the names. Uh, Charlie Catron as Miss Wednesday, Sinhil Ramathi as Nefari Cobra, Katie Siegel as Dr. Correa, Mark Harolick as Dr. Heroic, Daniel Lasker as Mr. Nine, Cameron Johnson as Mr. Five, Jazra Jaslin as Miss Valentine. This name always kills me. I just like to call, I just like, I basically call him Poke Dot, Poke Dot Man. Dave, uh, David Demasculin as Mr. Three, Warner Coster as Dory, Brendan Murray as Brogy, Clive Russell as Crocus. Callum Kerr as Smoker, which I think is good. What's good casting? Julia Redard as Tashigi. Robert Coletti as Wapu. Ty Say what? That's good casting. Yeah. Uh, Ty Cole as Dalton. Joe Manigello. Uh, Joe Manigello as Mr. O. I can do. I can live with that. And of course, Leah Bub as Miss All Sunday. Now, uh, again, One Piece season two is now filming. 
if you have, I mean, I'm going to be honest, me, Joe, as everybody else said it, and th thanks, Cap, the masculine, yeah, I completely destroyed that name. Um, but, yeah, uh, it looks great as far as the casting goes. Um, if it's like the first season, I expect it to be great. Um, but, guys, any thoughts on the casting? Do we do they got a nail or we just need to wait? And as, yeah, we get Tony Chopper. <laughs> we do. I'm Shout curious, out to show you. I'm curious to see how... I'm curious to see how they do Drum Island and Alabasta in the span of eight episodes, because they at least did a good job of introducing it in the first episode of the first season with Zoro. I, mean, they... I don't know. Go, go, go. Yeah, because well, the dude he ends up killing is from Baroque Works, which is like the organization mm -hmm. in Alabasta. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to what all. I'm curious if this is gonna finish Alabasta or if we're gonna. Maybe cliffhanger it and lead off into Alabasta Sky Pier. I think I would say cliffhanger because they did a great job with Big. They, they did a great job with Big Blue. They didn't try to. They didn't try to. They didn't try to go from one end to another in eight episodes. It kind of gave a grand oversight, but they left it open ended, which is great. But I think the same thing is going to be said for season two. I think they just need to continue with that format that they had. Don't try to change anything. Don't try to push it. Don't try to overdo the pacing. If it works, it works. That's all I'm getting at. Yeah, I was I was very surprised they got through all of East Blue the way they did. Mm -hmm. But Joe, any thoughts on that? Who do they cast for Mr. Two? Who do they cast for, for Mr. Two? Oh, uh, shoot. Two. I just closed. Give me one second because I just closed it. <laughs> just closed it. So I, I would think like we do the Tony Tony Chopper work in like two to three episodes, and then the other five episodes are the is the first half of uh, Alabasta. Possibly, maybe even one and a half, because Drum Island, when you look back at it, was not that long. Right, and Lopo, 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 Lopo. No, and like if there are hour long who? episodes, then yeah, yeah. You're asking who was cast as Mr. Two, Joe? Yes. Uh, I was looking through the list here. Wednesday, Cobra, mm -hmm. Bird, oh, Mr. Nine, Mr. Five, Mr. Three, Mr. Valentine. Um, not seeing Mr. Two, but let me. They left out trip. Bond Clay. They left out the cross dressing, transforming Swan Ballet Ninja, uh, Ninja Man. I wonder if that's they're waiting or if that's going to be under wraps because Mr. Bond Clay, we're still waiting to see if Bond Clay's around. Like Bond Clay's kind of pivotal to a lot of things. Yeah, especially um, Impel Down. Uh, yeah. It, I, I had to double check on this to see if a Mr. Two was casted. Not as of yet. Yeah, Bond Clay is the reason we even got Marine So he may be the second half of so yeah, he may be a season three character. Yeah. So Mr. Two, yeah, Mr. Two hasn't been casted as of yet. I had to double check on that. But yeah. So nope, not as of yet. But who knows? It might be a surprise during this season, not during this upcoming season, for all we know. But again, definitely not knocking it. Uh, but we do have some video game trailers to get through. Uh this one, again, Tay Mutant the Turtles for the Nintendo Tales, for the Nintendo Switch. Words are hard. I apologize. This one, basically, guys, is called Mutants Unleashed. Let me know what you think about it. Oh, yeah, this one dropped when we were live last week. Hi again, guys. April O'Neil here, and I have some exciting news to share today. The Ninja Turtles are out saving the city yet again. I don't know if you guys have noticed... But there are a lot of new faces around. Mutant faces. And not all of them are friendly. So it's up to the turtles to do something about it. Luckily, each of them has their own unique way of dealing with unexpected problems. But who are these new mutants? And what do they want? If you ask me, they look like groups of concept. Or some strange experiment to me. Hopefully the turtles can find out what's really going on. They sure have a bunch of friends to help them now. Or uh, not? 
And who's to say our turtle teens can't learn a few new tricks themselves? Or even make new friends from all across this famously friendly city. What do you guys think? Was that okay? Do, do we need another take? Rated everyone 10 and up. All right. And that was the trailer for TA Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants Unleashed. As you can see, coming to the Switch October 18th. It is following Mutant Mayhem, which again was a great uh, showing for the Turtles. Um, fellas, what are we thinking? Worth playing or just moving right along? Or as, uh, or as Cap said, I like it. Give me 14 of them now. <laughs> I do like it. Um, I already got my fill with, what was it? Not Mutant Mayhem. Um, the arcade when they released like a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. So I think the for kids who are... Yeah, not the arcade collection. It was the one right before that. Um, it was made by Dot Emu, and it was basically almost like the original animated show. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a straight to download twenty dollar game, but it was a decent one. Added a lot of bonus content, so I've had my fill. But this is gonna be fun for anybody who likes the new movie. So, which I also have a poster of. <laughs> but the um, I also heard the cartoon is really, the show they have out for that movie right now is actually very good. Oh yeah, the the it show is, itself. It I, I do actually like that. But no, it looks it does look pretty cool. Joe, what do you think? Uh I mean <laughs> I'll give it a shot eventually, I'm sure. Uh I got so much on my Switch and on my PlayStation right now. Uh because of stuff being available because of the catalog update. So mm -hmm. it'll be a bit, right. but I'll definitely get to it. All right, they did update the NES, Sega Genesis, uh, N64 libraries now. Um, I keep forgetting about that, but good to know. The other game is going to yeah, be pretty much a cyberpunk RPG I've been doing called uh, Keylock. The mod? No, You're there's not the a mod. mod. It's uh, an actual cyberpunk RPG. Oh. No. Uh, my bad. I thought you were talking about Phantom Liberty for a second. My fault. Um, but no, it does look pretty cool. I will give it that. Um, the next one we have is kind of short. Again, you already know about Mario and Luigi's Brothership. This is a little bit of an overview of uh, the abilities that you'll have on the game, either as Mario or Luigi. All I can say is, where's the blue homing shell? Um, but it is cool to see, actually see you actually did see some co-op moves between Mario and Luigi. The lever I get, the shells I get, it is kind of giving a little bit of Mario Kart along with it, but looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? Uh, I just finished the original like Superstar Saga, so I may actually go and get this one. I think I'll give it a shot. I, I, I haven't played my Switch in quite a while, so I think I'll give it a shot myself. Uh, Joe? All the Mario RP, all the Mario and Luigi games have been nothing short of fantastic, even that weird team up with Paper Mario, but I so look forward to this. It looks so much fun. Yep. Uh, although it's although it's a lot better than the Nintendo Switch 2 leak, um, let's be honest, just to save y'all the embarrassment, it just looks horrible. Um, just because uh, they are trying to basically leak the Switch 2. However, again, no official news on when it comes out. No specs have been given out. Matter of fact, nothing has been given out. Um, just to go ahead and clear that up, because a lot of people are saying, well, we're going to hear about it sooner or later. Here's the one thing about Nintendo. Nintendo is very tight-lipped about anything unless it gets leaked. That's how we found out about uh, certain other games that were coming out because it was already leaked. Uh, but as far as the Switch 2, nothing has been said as of yet. Um, but the other video game trailer that we have, Like a Dragon, Pirate, Yakuza in Hawaii. Uh, Joe, how do we describe this game? Is this another Yakuza game? Uh, 
Yeah, like this literally dropped today. This is like the most left field thing ever. It's a Majima only game. Yeah, when you'll you, trust me, but you'll when you see the trailer, you, just all I can sit there and say to, to Farai, just watch. I just feel like they talk about Kingdom Hearts fans in this series. It's just like, you want a new game? No, sure, here's three. <laughs> ないやろね。ただただ水がありがたくてのう。あんなうまいもん生まれて初めてやった。どんな高い酒でもあるにはかなわ。よ。そのうちだんだん頭に浮かんできた。なんで俺はこんな砂浜で寝とったんよ。思
マッドランティスってとこから来てんだよギャングとかマフィアのたまり場の島こっちも行くぜ準備せえおりかじいっぱいエスペランサの財宝って聞いたことないかそれを探してるってじいさんがマッドランティスに来てたんだこれはおもろなってきたぜよっしゃ野郎ども出航準備やマッドランティスに行くでおいなんだこれどうする船長ひとまず逃げるかマッドランティスの洗礼っちゅうことかな手洗い歓迎やないかいほら<笑>マッドランティスはいくつかの犯罪組織で運営されてるそのうち一番でかいのがクイーン・ミシェルってばあさんの組織だようこそ海賊諸君我が王国マッドランティスへ。ちゅうわけで記憶喪失で目覚ましてたったの2日俺は海賊の船長になって海にこぎ出した行く手に待ち受ける数々の冒険はお宝をめぐる戦争になっていくわけよねえどうせならさ目標を決めない目標例えば伝説の海賊を目指す部下はどう伝説の海賊かよっしゃ俺ら五郎海賊団は伝説の海賊団を目指すでいい<笑><笑>I didn't see、uh, Samoa Joe the first time around. I、me、saw、neither. this time. Yeah, I, that threw me off、It's、too like, when I saw it. I was like, right. But no, I, that threw me off too when I saw him. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be playing that、uh, when it comes out. But yeah.、Um, but beyond that,、oh, yeah. um, beyond. Hands down, easy. Say what, Joe? I said, no, hands down. <laughs> Honest to God, I thought this was DLC for Like a Dragon 8 when it first got announced.、Uh, and then, like, after I watched the trailer, it's like, oh no, this is a full game. This is like the man who erased his name. Yeah. That definitely, it definitely got those vibes. That, that whole first half of the trailer could have been its own game. And then it's like, then they give you an entire five minutes of C gameplay on top of it. Pretty much. But not complaining. I dig it. Uh, but Netflix did have its geeked out week and it did have some trailers that surprised us. Uh, first one up, Castlevania's Nocturne Season 2 is coming out. And if you like the first one, second one doesn't look like it's gonna not g o n n a disappoint at all. I could use some help, Richter.
Belmont, after all. And there's a regular Castlevania series out already, right? Yeah. And Nocturne is what, a spinoff, prequel, sequel? It is basically uh, after that. Technically season four? Yeah. Okay. So Nocturne basically takes up after that. But no, it's pretty much following what happens next. Um, again, with the teaser, you're basically seeing Alucard and Richard Belmont going to fight and fighting the vampire messiah this time. So it's not exactly Dracula, but a different vampire. But it was going to be good. I mean, I like the first season, so I'm pretty sure the second season is going to be no problem. Um, but again, we'll find that out come next year. Also, this one actually just dropped today. Devil May Cry. Now, Devil May Cry had a run before with Madhouse. Still recommend people watch that because it's still a great anime. But it seems that Netflix has decided. Why are you shaking your head, Joe? Why are you shaking your head? Because that was the most boring Devil May Cry since Devil May Cry 2. Damn. Damn, why why I gotta be two? <laughs> just not two. two had a story, two had a terrible story. I'll give you that. Two, two had a de- two had a terrible story. I'll give you that. But damn, I mean, I at least enjoyed it. I mean, granted, the story could have used a little bit more, a little bit of more polish, but damn, compared it to two. I mean, this looks like fun. What we're about to see looks fun, but. That last Madhouse Devil May Cry was boring as shit. But the anim- but at least the animation was good. Just give it something, Joe. Damn. Anyway. Dante's trailer was indeed red. Jesus Christ. Trailer, here's the Netflix trailer for Devil May Cry. This guy. He's something else. The way he moves, the hits he took. His name is Dante. What kind of work do you do exactly? Demon hunting. That actually looks pretty cool. Um, that was the next fix trailer for Devil May Cry. Um, to be honest, there is it is looks like it's and, and Joe Crippy if I'm wrong on this. We did not see Ebony, we did not see the guns Ebony and Ivory in his hands, did we? We look like just a it's like a pair of regular handguns. It didn't look like Ebony and Ivory. Oh. Maybe before Devil May Cry 3. I'm not too sure. Was that Danny Young Bosch doing the voice work for Dante in this? Uh, let me double check. I think he is, but let me double check while you're doing that. Um, but no, it does look pretty good, though. So, I mean, at least that, if it's a prequel story, I guess that would make sense. Uh, because the simple fact of the matter is, he did have a life before he did decide to go full on demon hunting. And you are right. It is Johnny Young Bosch that is voicing. Uh, that is voicing him. So you're exactly right. He's having a run this week, man. But between that and Bleach, and the between that Bleach and another anime, yeah, he's and, uh, and sparking because he plays Broly now. Yeah, his dance card is definitely full. But um, uh, Zuri. Like, yeah, Zuri's well, Zuri was right here and heard her behind me, and she's gonna be waking up pretty soon. But uh, but yeah. It definitely is worth watching, but what do you guys think? I'll give it a shot. I've never really been the biggest Devil May Cry fan, but I understand there's a fandom for it. My introduction was actually when um, I think it was the PS2 version of Beautiful Joe. If you beat it all the way through, you mm-hmm. got to unlock Dante as a playable character and kind of see his version. It, was le- and it wasn't even a reskin. He kind of had his own version of the in-game moves. It was pretty cool. 
Yeah. Um, but I never knew much about him outside of that and other fighters. Yeah. So it does. It does actually look pretty interesting. Joe, I know you. I know your feelings on the anime Adele May Cry may have soured, but do you think on this one you probably give this one a shot for Netflix? I don't know. I definitely will because this one's much more kinetic. It looks more lively. Uh, he's doing more than sitting on a train talking for twenty minutes. Uh, <laughs> so no, I'm totally down. Cool. Well, the next one I got, guys, is probably the last trailer from the Geek Out Week. Again, I did not expect this, but kind of looking forward to it as a Splinter Cell fan. Um, outside of waiting for another game, I'm just saying it's been a while. That being said, here's the trailer for Splinter Cell's Death Watch. Don't be afraid. Darkness is a good thing. Once you get used to the shadows, you see bad people for who they really are. And they'll never see you coming for them. Well, that was the teaser trailer for uh, Splinter Cell Death Watch. Um, that will be coming to Netflix next year. Um, I know it didn't show a lot, but I still want to see what it's going to be about because... Almost every Splinter, I mean, I'm a Splinter Cell fan since the beginning on Xbox. I think it, you know, give it its due diligence to see if it's going to be workable. But yeah, I know they didn't really give us a lot of information here, but uh, what do you guys think? I'm curious to see how it comes out, because the animation looks like it'll be solid. I'm also curious to hear Lee Shriver as the main character. Yeah, that's Sam Fisher. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, Joe, what do you think? Not really a big fan of Splinter Cell because the games to me were not as enjoyable as like Metal Gear. Mm -hmm. I'll at least try the first episode, but like I'm not going into it the same fervor as everybody else. Same. I never got into Splinter Cell or Metal Gear because I feel like they were kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, yeah. But kind of the 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 slow pace stealth thing never really sold me. Also, I was too young for the original game, so I knew they had a hype behind them. Just mm -hmm. never jumped in on the fandom at any point. But it seems like it is at least a big play on like a decent project. Uh, I always say it's always it's always a stealth venture. There's no witnesses, but um, that's not in games. I didn't really play them as they should be played, but I digress. So before we get into our Agatha and Penguin reviews. Um, just wanted to announce, if you are headed to New York Comic Con this year, um, DC seems to be going for broke. What I mean by that is, is that um, DC is actually playing forward with a lot of panels at New York Comic Con, starting with uh, DC's Gotham City on Thursday, October 17th, um, which will basically talk about uh, the DC Universe uh, with Alex Guerra, who does The Question, Push War, Batman City of Madness, Dan Waters with Nightwing, Hayden Sermon with Absolute Wonder Woman, uh, Tate Bromgall with Batgirl. Um, that's just Thursday. Um, Thursday, Friday is DC's Absolute All-In Universes to where they're basically going to be talking more about Absolute Green Lantern, Action Comics, Superman, uh, Wonder Woman, Absolute, uh, Absolute Superman, JSA, Absolute Flash, Absolute Flash. Uh, again, The New Gods, Scott Snyder's Absolute Batman, Tom King's Wonder Woman is also going to be discussed. Uh, come Saturday, it'll be Jim Lee, and, uh, Jim Lee and Friends, where they basically talk about uh, announcements. That's usually when the big stuff is going to drop for DC around that time. Uh, we'll probably be on Saturday. Uh, so again, Room 409 if you get to go. So again, with Gun running DC Comics and the fact that we're basically seeing a lot of things happening for New York Comic Con coming up, is this is DC's way of saying that they're riding the ship, or is it all like a Hail Mary, we hope to God you guys pay attention to us? I feel like it's them trying to be more in touch with the fans, which I feel like they have not really been in the last couple of attempts of anything they've done, because mm -hmm. they kind of just put things out and they're like, hey, please show up. But I think they're trying to get that same Marvel fanfare or that DC animated fanfare, because... 
you know, I just saw another panel. Everybody loves the cast of Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go because they actually yeah. know they interact with people. But I think this is a better rollout because they usually just do DC Fandom, which is just like a Nintendo Direct for movies. Yeah. Remember when the big hype point for uh, Fandom last year was letting us know that in Flash Season 9 he gets gold boots? I thought you were going the other route with it. I was going to stand and say when Ezra Miller looked high as all get out. <laughs> I just, he was no, that, that's his usual state of being. That's just, that's how he didn't even know he was there. Uh, I I was too distracted by the fact he was dressed like Mr. Slade from South Park. Right. The fact that he just looked high as a kite for a movie that wasn't even done yet, so he couldn't show anything. But I agree. I agree with that, that I think that this is DC's way of saying, of, of, you know, we're trying to be more in touch with you guys, especially with James Gunn. You know, Mr. Mister, I'm always on the socials is ready to correct or change or let us know that this is real or not. Um, this, this gives me hope. As a DC fan, it definitely does give me hope. And again, I feel jealous for all of you guys that get to go to New York Comic Con to actually get to see that in person, especially on Saturday. Whatever they may be announcing, I'm not going to try to speculate on that. I am just going to be looking forward to it. Um, so before we get to Agatha all along, because that's going to be a whole thing in itself, um, really quickly, uh, our review on The Penguin. Um, the Penguin did premiere on Max. Uh, not trying to go really into a whole lot of detail on it, just because... There was a lot in that first episode. Um, I will say this before I pass it on to you guys. Um, it was a great first episode. Uh, I love the fact of how Colin Farrell's character, how his portrayal of, of Penguin is. I love how the fact that they're not trying to make a Gotham without Batman. Batman is mentioned a few times in the show, and that's it. And it was perfect because you were allowed to focus on the crime families, you were allowed to actually get into the psyche of Mr. Of, of Mr. Oz himself. And at the same time, you got to see a setup of what is to come in the next couple of episodes. Again, this is a limited series, so we're not going to expect a lot. But I love the first episode. But what do you guys, if you guys saw the first episode, what did you guys think? So for me, it's, it's very much Gotham Sopranos. Although I feel like had the kid, I get it. They both kind of have their own issues. Do we see what happened to his foot in the first movie, or is this our reveal for that? It's it was in the first in the first movie he landed wrong, and the Batman's where he hurt his foot. Okay, so he just never because I see he's got the limp now. Yeah, um, and are we just calling him Oz instead of Oswald? Yeah, now? pretty much. They are basically they are basically sticking with Oz for right now. Okay. Because I was confused with that, and then the kid with the stutter, who I clearly think he was about to let go if he had just shut the hell up, but decided to, of all the times you're able to find words now, and now you're stuck as this guy's lackey, which I'm hoping this doesn't end terribly for you. Well, I got some I got some theories about that kid's character and who he's going to be, but I'm, I'm just going to wait until, I'm going to wait until at least about the third or fourth episode before I sit there and say it. I just have a theory about him. Um... But yeah, but Joe, what about you? I don't have Max. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. My bad. Um, well, I would say this because uh, then you did you at least read the premise on it or how it went, or just haven't had a chance to yet? No, okay. I haven't had a chance to. Fair enough. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that then, just because again, I don't want to go into too much detail on it because it just came out yesterday. So, again, if you are interested in seeing the Penguin, the first episode on Max, go ahead and do it or whatever or wherever you stream. Um, it is up to you whether you choose to do Max the Grand Line. Get Bit does not tell you where to go. We just tell you where it's available. That's all we're going to leave it at that. Um, the other show, again, which might as well be a musical because I was not expecting that in the second episode. Uh, Marvel's Agatha all along. Um I'm gonna start with you. I'm gonna start with you, Tafara. What'd you think? Um, very much doing a due diligence when they say that. I guess this this is definitely a sequel to Wandavision, with supposedly Vision Quest or whatever Vision's next project is being the third or the closer. Um, got to go to a screening for this again. Thank you, King Lion and Allied Global for that. 
Uh, very much liked how they went right back into the WandaVision antics right off the bat of her being in a true crime drama. And then we find out she's not even really leaving her house. It's just it's just all in her head with the neighbors just kind of interacting with her from a distance. Uh, we also are apparently three years post WandaVision in the MCU right now. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In universe and out of universe. Try because they said three years. I thought that counted just how long she'd been in Westview, not three years post Wanda. Um, the teen, I don't know. He uh, he better be useful in like the next thirty minutes or something. But he he is very much giving me young Barry from the Flash movie vibes, and I'm. Well, you don't know who he is, do you? There's many theories of who he could be. Oh, I know exactly all- who he is. I, I need that to play forth very soon because the whole just angsty teenager from Hot Topic who just wants to learn how to fly and do potions is. Although, although I will say this, the whole thing of not revealing is, you know, he, as he tries to say his name, you see his mouth kind of gets so shut. That's what's keeping me hooked. He's clearly got a purpose. I just need him to start mm-hmm. it very fast. Hey, did you see the second episode? I saw it. Yeah. Where, like, he's in the car and, like, the sound just mutes away. Yeah, yeah. She can hear the radio, and but you mm-hmm. can't hear him. And there's somebody, I think, two cars following them when they're driving both times. Right. But I, mean, I know exactly who this kid is, but that's like a huge spoiler. Everybody's saying either a reincarnated kid, yeah. uh, Wiccan, Mephisto, or. No. Sacrifice Agatha Child come back from the grave. Pretty much. But Joe, what did you think of the first two? What did you think of the episodes? I think it's very well done. Uh, I lo- had to go back and read the Made By because it was like Made By Wanda Vision. Uh, the actual credits for uh, Agnes and Westview, the crime story uh, opening theme. <laughs> that was very good. Uh, no, it's people need to give up this Mephisto BS. I'm tired of it already. <laughs> this is the first episode. It will never be Mephisto because he is too ignorant and uh, self uh, self advertising to where mm. he will let you know it's him. There will be no mystery. He will present himself up front because he is that much of a narcissist, narcissistic demon. He's not like Neuron. Who we'll get to later. If it's Mephisto, he will outright tell you it's me. So uh, I already know who the kid is. I, I saw the moment I saw the fingers, and right before his mouth got shut, he started to say his name. It's like, okay, I know who you are. Where's your Where's your brother? I could say that. Where's but I'm gonna, I, I would agree with you, but I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait to see if we see. I'm just gonna wait to see if we see a curveball. I was wondering hoping if we were going to get a musical number every episode or if the whole thing is just going to slowly become a musical because the coven's together. Oh, that that musical that musical number came out of nowhere. And at the same time, it is now it is now uh charting on uh uh Apple Music. Yeah, I didn't think when we were in the theater watching it, I was like, okay, I get it. Like, I thought it was going to be a quick chant. I didn't know it was going to be all full blown performance, but they held it together very well. And I thought it was hilarious. So they just started picking each other apart. It's like, well, you were too low. Well, you were flat. But the crazy part about it is, after the episode released, didn't realize that at D23, they actually performed it live. Did they really? That now on, that it's now on YouTube for the world to see. Which was crazy that they now released that, but uh, but no, I think the first two episodes I, I do like the whole true crime opening that was interesting, um, and of course Miss uh, I forgot her name already. Her her performance has been great so far. That's just it's just weird to see her Catherine playing Hunt. that character. Thank you, yeah. no, not Catherine Hahn, uh, the other woman, Aubrey Aubrey. Aubrey uh, yeah. Thank you, that's her name. Loved, I love her role so far, and the fact that you, the fact that we correct me if I'm wrong, that was the Salem Seven that did pop up, right? Supposedly, supposedly the Salem Seven. 
I feel like it, uh, between the musicals and whatever this kid is doing or whoever he is, I need just give me little glimpses of what she did to piss off all these people or give witches a bad rep because I'm curious why they're coming for her explicitly right now or did breaking out of Wanda's magic just put a beacon on her I, head that she's vulnerable? That's a good fair point. I think they did explain some of that in WandaVision. Like the last second to last episode, uh, they did explain that why people were coming after her and probably, and this is theory craft for me, being in Wanda's spell kind of sh- Shielded her because she had no power. Yeah. And while she still has no power currently, she uh, she's putting herself out there, and they're able to find her. Okay. I like the fact that the that the rebound was just burying her under layers of personas. That was interesting. But no, the song, the song, the fact that being on the witch's road. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Like I said. Disney has a Halloween. Disney has a Halloween lock for this show, so I'm going to be curious to see what they go with it. But it is definitely uh, worth watching. And let us know in the comments what you think of uh, the Penguin and Matt and Agatha's all along. You know, did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you think Disney might be going the right way, the wrong way? We want to know what you guys think. Um, but before we get to our comment polls, guys, um, and also the po- movie posters, which Tafari, Tafari, you are always good with getting movie posters, man. I just want to point that out. I was not. They were being stingy at the theater today because all my friends were like, hey, I just walked in and said I forgot the um, poster when I went to go see Transformers. I'm like, I tried it. And they were very much like sizing me up about it, but I still got two. Nice. They gave these out at the end of the, uh, the screening earlier this week. Gotcha. Well, before we do our usual uh, comic book pulls, before we call it night, guys, we do also want to show support uh, to our people of color, whether they're artists, whether they're authors or things of that nature, because uh, Mr. Tony Weaver Jr., his book, Weirdo, is definitely out. And I'll let the man speak for himself about the actual book and uh, let you judge for yourselves. Chain decided they wouldn't stock my book about a nerdy kid finding self-confidence. So I'm going to prove them wrong by taking it straight to the New York Times bestsellers list. It's called Weirdo, and it's the nerdy kid's instruction manual for self-love and self-expression. It's a crash course on how to deal with bullies, embrace being nerdy, and make friends. Kids today are really struggling with their mental health, but you pre-ordering can help. Right now, there are book bans targeting black characters and people that don't think comics and manga count as real reading. Plus, even though the New York Times normally puts out a list once a week, for comics, they only drop one list monthly. So when Weirdo releases on September 17th, I'll have 13 days to outrank what every other book sells in 30. Pre-orders count towards that number, even though they're placed in advance. So if I build a nerdy army, we might have a chance. Pre-order Weirdo by Tony Weaver Jr. if you care about black characters, kids having comics, or youth mental health. Couldn't have said better myself. Weirdo is available wherever you can get your books or sold, whether it's Amazon, whether it's a local bookstore. Definitely check it out. Um, we actually got the chance to actually talk with Mr. Weaver Jr. himself. Very intelligent guy. Love the fact of the message of what he's putting out there. And again, guys, whenever it comes to books, we always say read the banned books, which kind of goes into our next thing. We also wanted to show love to Rick's Comic City. Rick's Comic City, uh, Nashville's number one place to get comic books, guys. Um, again, they have two locations, Nashville and Clarksville, Tennessee. You can definitely check out their website at rickscomiccity.com to where you'll be able to order your comics, your mangas, things of that nature, collectors items, trade issues, pull lists, you name it, they can do it. Um, so definitely you are in the Middle Tennessee area, definitely check out Rick's Comic City. If you are not in the Middle Tennessee area, guys, so please support your local comic stores, support your local libraries. Um, they are the last places to where you can get an experience. Note that I said an experience, not the actual book. Sure, there's Amazon. Sure, there's Starbucks. Any place with coffee, great. But there's just something about going to a comic book store. There's something about going to a library to where you can only, not only can you enhance your uh, your imagination, but you can read the banned books. And trust me, you're going to want to. That banned book list is getting rather long. So again, guys, support your local libraries, support your local comic book stores. You are going to miss them when they're gone. So with that being said, uh, Joe, uh, what's the comic book pool list this weekend, sir? Present, share, boop, beep. 
Facebook. All right. And uh, whenever you're ready. Uh, first off, we got a small list this week. There's a lot of titles, but we tried. To, I'm trying to narrow it down a little bit more. Uh, one one number thirteen. Uh, this is absolute power tie-in. It says breakout. This issue should be called the makeout issue. Uh, this is written by Tom King with art by Tony S. Daniel and colors by Leonardo Passerati. Uh, uh, pretty much. This continues the last storyline where Damien and Wonder Woman were breaking people out. We are in the uh, island prison where they also stumble, stumble upon Steve. They make out a whole bunch. We just get <laughs> you gross from Damien because Damien's 13 and thinks kids and girls is very much picky and uh, need. Uh, Steve tries to like show to Steve, is like, no, Roman just kills people. Also, these guys that run this base are idiots. And say probably what is, as I put on my Facebook wall, the stupidest last words you will ever say in a fight to Wonder Woman. It's a girl with a sword. What could she do? Like, why would you do that to yourselves, guys? Just, just, why would you do that? Was, that? that was famous last words. <laughs> oh, those were the those were the stupidest last words ever. What do you think? Not bad. That actually, well, you called it. It was definitely the makeout issue. Um, aside from that, it was. I will give it to you because you know, whenever it comes to Tom King, I said before and I say it again. Some issues are just hitting this, but this one wasn't bad. Deep. Moving on over, we got Absolute Power Super Sun number one. This is written by a lot of people and drawn by a lot of people. But I don't need it to be that close. Uh, this is written by Cena Grace and Nicole Maines. Uh, arts John Timms and Travis Mercer. Cars by Hi Fi Andrino Lucas, uh, Pete Pen, uh, Pantizas, and Le Rex Locus. Lucas. So pretty much this is Superboy uh, pretty much getting like um, mental undoing his mental conditioning now that he's free from the influence of Brainiac Queen. Uh, despite what it looks like here, he is totally free of all inorganic uh, materials on him. So he no longer looks like Cyborg Superboy. But they are going through his mind and trying to Make sure that uh, Brainiac Queen did not, not leave any mental uh, mental defenses or mental cues that would reactivate or re put him back in the throw of Amanda Waller. A uh, good issue. I like where they take Connor. We get some more uh, stuff about you know him wanting to get with his boyfriend and just leave a, lead a nice healthy fun life elsewhere quietly and let the superheroes be superheroes because I think John's just kind of over it at this point. Yeah, uh, it was I enjoyed this of, one. Yeah, this issue is was more along the lines of a... This issue is more along the lines of a... It kind of gave me the Bucky episode from the Falcon and Winter Soldier where Bucky was making sure that he was deprogrammed. It kind of gave me that feel, but it was still a good issue, though. And then Superman number 18, uh, also an absolute power tie-in. Uh, the crux of this one is Zatanna and Superman make a deal with Neuron, where Neuron's like, I'll help you out, but Superman has to lie. It's like, that's it? It's like, it's Superman. Truth, justice, and is literally in his thing. He absolutely has never lied. And I want his first slide to be for me. <laughs> Superman's like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and then you realize, like, Superman and I lied to Neuron. It's like, no, Neuron got what he wanted. <laughs> also, there's some stuff going on with, like, Steel and Lois. But the other big thing is, uh, in the battles of hell itself, Doomsday finally broke through the barrier and maybe returning to the land of the living.
Yeah, I just thought that was kind of weird that we're rehashing Doomsday again. Um, but yeah, Superman telling a lie. It kind of threw me off for a second. I'm like, what did he lie about? Because all Neuron said was, I want Superman to lie. Superman said, cool. But maybe I missed it. What did he actually lie about the issue or is that or coming up? I, I think the lie was, like, he talks to Zatan about it. It's not really clear what he lied about. He just told Zatan, like, no, I just lied to him. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, did you? I, I don't know what you lied about exactly, but okay. Maybe the lies that he was willing to Not lie? Not a little confusing. I have no idea. It's so weird. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was either this or Catwoman number 38's or some other DC book that we're trying to do help Josh Williamson because this is written by Josh Williamson, art by Jamal Campbell, and colors uh, letters by Arania Mahler. And uh, where is... Oh, he did colors and art. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, it was... Like, yeah, that's, they're that's a stronger book this week. Yeah, sorry guys. I was trying to <laughs> Zuri, was, Zuri was ready to eat, so I had to kind of get her settled. But uh, but no, uh that's the thing though. It's like what that that's the part that was sticking with me on that episode on that particular issue was where was the lie? Because it was like I kind of felt like that was setting up for something, but it could have been just that. I want Superman to lie. Okay. And maybe that I, was I, it. I don't know. <laughs> it just it, that's why I said that sounds like it's I'm it's sure we'll, like it's I'm sure we'll figure else. out what it was. Yeah, it's like it's setting up for something else, but good issue though. Yeah. Jumping over to Marvel, uh, this is Avengers number 18. This is written by Jed McKay, art by Valerio Shanti, and colors by Brian Valencia. So this actually covers quite a bit. So this is them recovering from uh the vampire incident. Uh mm -hmm. also for some no reason, Hyperion has appeared, and we learned this is the Hyperion from the Heroes Reborn event, which was god awful, but replaced a lot of Marvel books for like two a month and a half. Because I think Heroes Reborn was going around the same time as Nightmare. Mm -hmm. You see nightmares, so mm -hmm. Hyperion is coming just to wreck the planet because he no longer has a world worth living until so he wants to die. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Storm just uh, Storm mm -hmm. kind of accepts Sam's offer to be an Avenger. Um, but we learned that like she's going to be needed because Thor's dipping out, and like yeah. she even goes and tells Scott, "It's like, hey, I'm going to probably go join the Avengers." Scott's like, "But you're a mutant. Why not be an X Man?" It's like, well, first off. I can speak for us on behalf of the Avengers because remember, every time the Avengers help us, it's after we're burying our dead children. Mm -hmm. And secondly, after the whole Krakoa thing, no one is ever going to give me orders ever again. And the Avengers, for the most part, are a group of equals lending their voices to a group. There's no one mm -hmm. in a higher chain of command. Pretty much. Then they eventually like saw the high period thing, but I love this issue. Like this, this was great introduction. Like bringing in Storm. I just like the fact she sat there and said, "I can no longer take orders from you." <laughs> it's like, dang, that's kind of bad. She says it straight to Scott. Like, I can no longer follow. I can no longer take orders from you. It's like, damn. But this does. This hopefully does lead to her. I don't book, think she meant orders out. from him. I just think she meant take orders as an X Man. The way the way it was reading is kind of directed at him, but I can see your point on that too. She can't. I, I think she just likes either the idea of command or she just doesn't want to be commanded anymore, which makes me which makes me very hopeful about her. Yeah, because her. Yeah, because I mean her the, her uh, beef was never with Scott; it was with Charles, because Charles sure. tried to invade her mind because of the whole last word of Magneto thing. I don't oh, know yeah, what she yeah. has against Scott. 
I think I think it's Scott still sided with Scott, Scott still kind of semi sided with uh, with the professor, but I can kind of see that. Yeah, and then Thor's is like, yo, I'm being framed for murder. I'm out. You got the lightning. <laughs> cool. It's like you have a goddess. You have a goddess with you have a god of the likability with lightning. But no, you got it covered. <laughs> that was still funny though. But no. Uh, this one was a good, I, I'd say this one was a good issue too. So yeah, no, great issue. I liked everything about this. Next up, we got X Factor number two. Uh, this is written by Mark Russell with art by Bob Quinn and cars by Jesus Abertov. I think... This is where X Factor's thing is going to go. It moves away from the ecstatics thing and goes more into the X Factor of uh, government. Of what if the government has a mutant team? And what happens when uh, you have to go against your own people? What fallout happens? And we take a good look at uh, that exact thing is like mm -hmm. Laura, Lorna really wants Havoc to like. No, come join this thing. It's a, like a mutant support group. Turns mm -hmm. out to be a secret anti anti human militia. Havoc's like, yeah, I work for the government. I got a job to take care of us and get us a place at the table. And Lauren is like, I don't want a place at the table. I want a place with our people. Like mm -hmm. Krakoa was great and we lost it because of stuff. So I like that this is moving back towards old school X Factor and away from ecstatics, even though we get that weird like grandma, Im immortal grandma who just like gets bored because she's old and tries to kill herself but can't because her mutant yeah, power is immortality. That's still weird. That's a little that's a little on the weird side. But this is better than the first issue. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to hang on for this one. It's this. <laughs> I'm trying to hang on for X Factor. It's just not really grabbing me, and maybe just because I just don't like the whole idea of rehashing, rehashing post Krakoa. It's almost like you're you're kind of being a dead horse at the point, being at that point um, with this story. But I, I don't know. It's like it didn't. I mean, one made me worry. Two is it really? Two isn't really making me excited. So. I'll give it three. Hopefully, issue number three is gonna be the one that saves it for me. But no, this one it was, it was man. I, I I'd say in, my, in the words of Lady Mandalore, this was mid. And then we got X Men number four, written by Jim McKay. Uh, pencils by Neth uh, Diaz. Inkers mm -hmm. by Sean Parsons. Colors by Marty Garcia. Uh, this was a fun thing. This was a fun issue. Uh, we learned that uh, Trevor Fitzroy now has the O to uh, make social media turn against the X-Men even more. And uh, Scott's out because he's got to do other stuff, so Magic leads the Strike Force team. I mm -hmm. also love that they really throw Rogue's X Men team under the bus. Want to go into the field? I, I want to like stay here and do science stuff. And they just like outright say it's like you can join or you can go uh, to the shanty tents and go be with Rogue and yeah. her team of X Men. Mm -hmm. uh, Fun fight. Uh, good art. I like that magic takes lead. Because we are leading into a magic solo book later on in the year, which yay for me. But mm -hmm. I always like when they put magic in the forefront because she actually is taking up the thing because we see that she's texting her brother back and forth as they play chess uh, basically across the planet against each other. Uh, I, I'm, uh, this is going to sound terrible. Uh, didn't like this one either. It just... And maybe just because I'm just not liking the pace of the story, but yeah, it, it didn't grab me for the for this issue. It just didn't do it for me, but that's all right. 
I think the problem with a lot of hearing this, because I'm like one of the few voices that are actually enjoying these books, like all the podcasts are really down on it. I think mm. the issue with these books is we left at such a high point with Krakoa that it's really hard to follow up. Well, like I mean, it's almost that, impossible to follow up the Krakoa storyline. I mean that, but you're also multi, you're also launching multi different X Men storylines right now, and I think that's a little that's bit of a so problem. Different from Krakoa, though. I mean, not all. So so you're right. Not Krakoa, all. Except every book right. is a different aspect of Krakoa. Right, but you have multiple stories. That's the thing. That's. It, it's kind of, it's kind of to me, it's like kind of oversaturating it, but that's just my view, though. Well, I mean, if we look at Kakoa, say for X Corp, because that died like right out the gate. Mm -hmm. uh, X Force was dealing with all the security details and the mutants that were still harming humans, and the Marauders was what anything Mr. Uh, Sinister wanted, whatever bizarre mutant stuff, bizarre mutant gene stuff was, which in his Hellions. Marauders was about getting people to safety. X Factor was the true crime on Krakoa book. X Men was the prime book. Uh, New Mutants was whatever Jonathan Hickman was trying to do before it got, uh, he dropped that to someone else and ultimately became a good book and then ultimately became a crap book. Um, like, we had multiple stories across Kakoa all going on at the same time. It's just that we all had the center focal point of it's all happening as Kakoa goes on. Whereas this one is just it's back to classic X-Men of they're doing their best to survive. No, I see your point. Don't get me wrong, I do see your point on that. It's just that for somebody that, you know, Krakoa had so many tie-ins with so many books, it's almost as if you're still trying to continue it, like it's an all-out one event. That's the problem I see with well, it. Well, because we're not doing a hard reboot. It's not like the X-Men universe got reset like they did it uh, from all new, all different. Then X-Men came, screwed with the reality for a little bit, and then it became Krakoa. It's we literally just jump from Krakoa to well, Krakoa's gone. What happens with all the mutants? And we got to tell right. those stories. But, but again, I think the issue we have with these books is we left at such a huge high point. So, did they just rewrite the are we in the same timeline as Krakoa, or what do we just we're in the same timeline? Like, there's been no like reality warping or anything's changed. It's just Krakoa is now gone, and we're back to basic X Men, everybody hating mutants and basic X Men stories. But I feel like we left at such a off, we left on such a high point because of what all Krakoa did that mm -hmm. this, like, afterwards, there's no way to catch up. Mm -hmm. See, so, I, or not catch I mean, up, there's no way to reach that peak again. I mean, I just uh, I just see it as just like, you know, if you're going to tell a story post post Krakoa, then, you know, you could tell it in one line. But does it have to be told? But does the aftermath always have to be reflective in every other line after that? Like it's if it's going to be one big continuum, then tell it to where it has to have an eventual aftermath and then move on from that. Because it sounds like because to me, it sounds like it's it's running its own universe using Krakoa as a nexus point to tell further stories. Now, if you're going to do that, cool. But eventually, Krakoa does got to get put to bed, and we do have to go with a new line of story. It's just that I think with X-Men and X-Factor, again, again, it could be just me. It really could just be just me, just because I know, I'm, I, know I am no, not I mean, an expert. I'm I know sure I'm not an expert. Say so what? It, the the theme, the feeling is shared a lot across the thing. Like X Factor, not a lot of people are liking. X Force, mm -hmm. a lot of people are liking. Exceptional mm -hmm. X Men, the one that feels like New Mutants, a lot of people are liking. The Rogue X Men is the best book of the, the group. Oh, okay. 
Well, that's just uh, well, I mean, I get that. Like I said, from what and I mean, not like whatever other, it is. Right. But what I'm saying for other people may not like, I may not like other people may like, but it's just for me, it's like I'm used to a certain used to a certain story once it's once it's made its once it's had its run, let's go on to something else. That's what I'm getting at. But I mean, like I said, like we usually say on this podcast, um, not all of these oh, things yeah, are no. gonna be like yeah, not all of these things are gonna be like, let's just be honest about that. And we're not doubting it. We're definitely not doubting it. We're definitely not trying to sit there and say, you know, don't read it. By all means, please read each of these books because um, each of these comic book lines that are going out there, guys, they do need support because this is what happened with this is honestly what happened with Static. This is what happened with Black Lightning. This is what happened with a lot of comic book runs that should have been longer, but because they didn't get the patronage that they deserve. So we stress very heavily here, guys. If you want these stories to continue, we gotta show them love. Simple and plain. Um, that just goes with the territory. Because trust me. So what? Oh no, go ahead. I was thinking out loud. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's just the thing about it is, guys. These comic book stories, because it's just like how Netflix does viewerships. If there's, if it's not getting constantly streaming, they're gonna cut it. And I don't want that for comic books. I don't want that for comic book stories because, again, it's just like She-Hulk. You know, some people didn't like She-Hulk, but I just assumed that they never really got She-Hulk, but a lot of people do. In the same sense with X-Men or X-Factor or with Blood Hunt or with Absolute Power or with DC Va or with DC, uh, DC versus Vampires. The thing about it is, guys, you have to give, if you want these stories to continue, they do deserve our support is what we're getting at. Um, so definitely do just that. Uh, but was that all? Was that it for the for the pool week, uh, Joe? Yep, we only had six. Okay, cool. Well, um, as we wrap this up, as we usually do, I'm going to start with uh, the man, the myth, the legend, the one who just keeps finding himself uh, next to celebrities. Uh, to far <laughs> I sir, you will let people know uh, what you're going to be doing, sir. Uh. I'm relaxing for a bit, actually. I posted a lot this week, but you can feel free to go back through it. You can find me on all platforms underneath this name. Um, thank you again, King Lion and Ally Global Marketing for the invitations. Um, I have actually posted a recap of the Transformers 1 early screening I got to go to, the Agatha All Along screening I got to go to. Um, also recently brought up that this week was the 20th anniversary of the four kids dub of One Piece. If you don't know what it is, go look it up and then remind a One Piece fan and watch them try to do diet. Um, what else have I done? I'm also almost done with my X-Men Evolution rewatch. I am officially on to season four, so I have two uploads left of that. I have six parts in. Um, those are actually doing surprisingly well on Facebook and YouTube. So if you're interested in more weekly X-Men discussions, I'm still doing that for two more weeks. Nice. All right. And stream yard is making stuff disappear on me. Joe, will let, those, will let the folks know what you're doing, sir. Uh, trying to stream Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2 on hard. It is indeed hard. Um, doing Ultraman stuff with Tafari on Wednesday nights. They eventually come out on Fridays or Saturdays, whenever I can stay awake and conscious long enough to upload them and uh, find good screenshots within the episode to do that. But we got episodes nine and ten on show over on Show Guy Joe. Uh, we also got uh, brief message letting people know over on TikTok because I have a TikTok which I use like maybe once a quarter to say, "Hey, go look at this thing." Uh, other than that, work lots of work. In October, it's going to be touch and go because it's Ghostbuster season for me. Yay, my back, my <laughs> poor back. Um, I may not, you, I may not take the pack out a whole bunch, just for my, just for back reasons alone. Ow, as I pop it. Uh, other than that, no, just streaming every so often. Be it on Twitch over Joe Italian last name or. Soul Justice Gaming, because I think that's where the uh, Warhammer 40k thing is. Guys, if you know Warhammer 40k lore, please come watch the stream and tell me about it, because I couldn't tell you anything outside of I hit orcs in the first game, and now I'm hitting aliens in the second game. 
So that's my lore knowledge of. I know I'm using the blue Space Marines. I'm told there's red and gray and black and other colored Space Marines, and they all mean something different. Come oh, yeah. teach me what the color. <laughs> oh, I got to interview. I gotta so interview I will not play the real game. I don't have it. I have so got to introduce that Discord. It will answer so many of your questions. All right. Uh, okay. So I guess I'm, that'd be me. Um, uh, before, before guys, I get on myself because, again, my daughter is in my arms uh, drinking her bottle. I do want to first always give support. Shout out to uh, BlurredStation.com, guys. Uh, BlurredStation.com. It is the vehicle, the table that we ask for, guys. It's where our viewership should be going because – our viewership is power. We have made to be a uh, from the cricket of media media networks to now well over a hundred million dollars, and it's owned by the same guy that owns Fox. We can do better. Blur Station is definitely it. If you want to check out Blur Station, please go to blurstation.com, hit the join now button, select the Blur's Eye View Offending membership. You can select myself, Black Spartan, or, or Tafari TV. Either one of us, we would certainly appreciate it. Um, $10.99 a month to watch Blur Station. After 36 months, you get to own a piece of Blur Station. Again, a lot easier than trying to own a piece of the network. If you do have content that you would love to show on Blur Station, you first must join as a member. Once you've done that, you'll be able to speak to the people behind the curtain. And if all goes well, your content will also be available on Blur Station. Uh, content that you own, but Blur Station will have a piece of distribution. You cannot beat that with a stick. Also, check out alwayspressrecord.com, APR TV, uh, as an app that can be found on all smart TVs and devices to where you'll be able to see uh, shows like uh, Get Bit Podcast and many other shows out there. Again, a network that is for us, for us, that our viewership needs to go to. Definitely check out Always Press Record or APRTV.com. And also, because we are getting close to votership, guys, I know we don't really talk a lot of politics on here, but Joe has said it multiple times, and doggone it, we need to make that a point. Um, we are 45 days from the election, as you can see there, 45 days, two hours, um, and going until November 5th. If you not have registered to vote, guys, please go to vote.org. You'll be able to check the registration. You'll be able to register to vote. It takes less than two minutes. You can also vote by mail. You can also see where you'll be able to go, what you need to bring with you guys. Again, we are not talking political, your affiliations, but let's just be honest, you definitely need to vote this year. So definitely check out vote.org. If you haven't already made sure, definitely be prepared because trust me, some tomfoolery will happen on November 5th and you need to be prepared. As for myself, guys, you can find me black underscore Spartan 615 on the socials as I usually cover a lot of things. You can also catch me and Tafari on Blurred's Eye View podcast every Tuesday, every Thursday. Our podcast can be found where a podcast can be seen or heard across the many multiple social channels out there. The link at the bottom will make that a little bit bigger for you guys to see. If you copy and paste that link into your browser, take your link tree that the YouTube and Facebook groups for all the podcasts. Like, share, and follow costs nothing, as the Reverend Navy once said. And we definitely want you to follow us all um, again because we are just basically trying to get these uh, trying to get the station to grow and we simply cannot do it without you. Also check out Safari TVs uh, because he does have three videos for cons um, how to plan for a con, what to do for a con and what to do for post con as I usually do have my rules as well respect the cosplayer at all times. Cosplay is not consent. Please treat people like human beings. It's not that freaking hard. At the same time cosplay is for everybody. The only reason the only rule that we have is don't do blackface don't want your ass kicked at a con don't do blackface. Number two, guys, hygiene is so freaking important. Please shower. Please have on clean clothes. These cons can be very much cans of sardines-ish, and you definitely don't want to go around funky, especially with the numbers of COVID and everything else going up, guys. Please be clean. Please be safe. And the third rule is I have for myself as I have for everybody else, guys, in a world that is cruel, that is definitely unkind, be nice, be kind, share and talk about your fandoms. Don't be a dick. And we'll all be cool. But as we wrap this up, guys, we do want to thank you all for watching. Again, the repeat will def the, the recast will be definitely tomorrow. Um, at the same time, we will be back next week uh, with news of what has happened in the world of gaming, of the world of television and movies, um, and things of that nature. So, um, and again, guys, I know the weather is changing. Um, please be safe. There is no there is no way I can say that right now. Please, oh please, be safe wherever you are, because I know right now. Fall is eventually coming, but there's some flooding in some states. It's extreme heat in some states. Please, guys, continue to hydrate. Summer's not done with us yet. 
With that being said, guys, any last words for you call tonight? Go see Transformers. You might get a free poster. It's also a fun time. Definitely that. Joe? We'll look out for that uh, Sony State of Play that may be out next week. Oh, right. Sony State of Play because, you know, they've already gotten us for a $700 system and already have sold out on these standalone disc options. Yay. Thanks, Sony. That being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and call it a night. I've been Will. No, He's been Joe. Huh? What do you say, Joe? I looked into that. That $700 price tag that I looked into in standard piece, uh, like what a PC with a decent graphics card and everything costs. PS5 right, is still the way to go. For, I could build, you know what? Let me not start. You can I can get take a, $700 you, and you build get a, a way better system. Yeah, you can get a decent pre build for 700 Right. You can get a decent pre build for 5 But you know what? I digress because I don't want to get the PC Master Race riled up. Even though I'm a PC builder myself, I'm just saying, $700, at that point, you can build your own rig. But again, I digress. We're going to call it a night. I've been Will. He's been Joe. He's been Safari. This has been the Give It Podcast, guys. Thank you all for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other. And we'll promise to get through this. I would say peace, but my hands are full. Good night, guys.